guys, it's me, Foxy. And Boxy. And today we're going to show you true, real life stories about Lanky Box. We'll get to see how Adam and Justin went to jail, the most embarrassing moments of their lives, and even how they got dumped by their girlfriends. Let's start with hearing about when Justin got super embarrassed. The story of the most embarrassing day of my life. <laughs> okay. Now this story takes place back in middle school. Now you already know, a lot of embarrassing embarrassing things happen at that age. Uh -huh. You know, middle school's an awkward time. I was a very awkward kid, okay? What? Still, still am now. <laughs> but I was even more cringe, more awkward back then. How could you possibly get more cringe than we already I, are I now? I don't know if you could even imagine <laughs> that. Basically, this whole story revolves around something we all know and love. Actually, something we all know and hate. Group project. Oh. At school. Oh, Dude. man. Anytime the teacher is like, all right, guys, pair up for a group project, I hate it. You are immediately in trouble because y'all know we don't have any friends. <laughs> Nobody's grouping up with us. And also, this story involves a girl. Got some romance. This story about to get crazy. This story takes place in middle school art class. Okay. So in art class, everybody gets assigned to a different table. You don't get to choose where you sit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My table was three people. It was me and two other boys. Now we were randomly assigned our table mates and these two kids, okay, one of them, literally everyone at school referred to this kid as Danger Dan. <laughs> This guy was the original bad boy. Well, wait, wait. Danger Dan? Oh, Danger Dan? What did people call you? Juicy Justin? What? <laughs> Everyone called him Danger Dan because he was very scary. Very okay. aggressive. He was like very large, uh -huh. like tall and large at a young age. Uh huh. And he had actually been suspended once before because he got in a fight with some other students. Okay. So Danger Dan was like really quiet. He always looked very intense. Yeah. And he just kind of sat in the corner. He was very scary, okay? And the other kid, we had Danger Dan, and the other kid, his name was Willis. <laughs> Dude, this was the most cringe art table of all time. You got Justy, you got Danger Dan, and you got Willis. And Willis is really one of the centerpieces of this story. Now, Willis was a very awkward kid, very shy, just like me, uh -huh. except a little bit less cringe. Uh -huh. He was just very quiet, like uh -huh. a very reserved kid. Okay. okay. So now the art teacher comes in and says, okay, we're going to have our final project before break. Everybody needs to get in random groups based on your table and do this together. I said, what? <laughs> I got to work with Danger Dan and Willis? <laughs> Why? This art teacher did not like our table. Uh -huh. She's Why? like, these kids are troublemakers. Two of them are very cringe. <laughs> and one of them is a troublemaker. Okay. She didn't like us. Dude, I could not make this up. She literally split up the art studio because like all the groups need a place to work. She gave our table to another group. She put us in a closet. <laughs> like, I could not make this up. It was a dark, musty closet where all the art supplies were. Uh -huh. And she's like working there. There's no windows. <laughs> There's nothing in there. What was the project that you guys had to do together? We just had to make some sort of art project and then present it in front of the class. Okay. The group project was not off to a good start. Okay, I'm gonna say for about the first three days, nobody said anything in that closet. <laughs> we just sat there. Just looking at each other. Dude, I remember this to this day. Danger Dan was sitting there and he would take pencils <laughs> from the art supplies because we're in the supply closet and he would just break all of them. Like, who does that? And you and Willis are just watching him. Just... I was terrified. I said, get me out of here. Well, a few days go by and you know, we got a couple weeks to put this together. I'm like, it is crunch time. I cannot let my grade slip because you know, I have a big brain. I got to do well in school. Okay. I said, I got to make a play. I got to do something. I got to break the ice. We're wasting too much time. You're going to save this group project. I, I got to... It's like an anime, like a sports team anime. <laughs> I gotta come in and unite everybody because these two kids clearly don't care about their grades uh -huh. and we need to do well. So one day I go to class. I'm determined to make a change. I'm still scared of Danger Dan because he's still there snapping <laughs> pencils, not talking. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go try and talk to Willis. So I go up to Willis, just introduce myself, try to get a conversation going. It's very awkward, but we actually connect because I learned that 
Willis likes to play chess. Okay. And you know, awkward, nerdy, middle school Justy <laughs> is a chess master. <laughs> okay, I went to all the tournaments. <laughs> I'm bringing home the trophies. <laughs> so Willis likes to play chess. So what we actually do is we use some of the art supplies and we paint it like a chess board and we used to play chess together in the closet. You made your own chess board? We had nothing else to do. <laughs> so a few days go by, things are getting better and Danger Dan starts to open up a little bit too. He starts to watch us play. He's very interested in what's going on. Uh-huh. He probably just ran out of pencils. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to stab you guys. <laughs> so I start to connect a little bit with Dan. Danger Dan. Also, I find out he likes to play video games online. Okay. And again, you know awkward, nerdy, middle school Justy is playing lots of online video games. Now, you know I like to play Maple Story, some fun stuff. Some Club Penguin. <laughs> Why you gotta expose me? <laughs> Just because I got 50 Club Penguin accounts. So Danger Dan likes to play some older, like some violent games, you know, online. Uh -huh. And he used to like teach me, like share tips. And we would actually go home from school and we would play together online. Okay. So I start to be friends with Willis and friends with Danger Dan through our nerdy hobbies. This is going great. Yes, it was going great. And soon it was literally like fun to go to art class. Yeah. So we just get to hang out in a closet unsupervised, just chill. Yeah. A few days go by and I say, all right, guys, got to get a team huddle in here. <laughs> guys, we need to make some sort of project. <laughs> My life hinges on getting a good grade in middle school school art class. We had all connected now. We felt closer to each other and Willis opened up to us. This left me shook. So there was this girl in art class. Her name was Isabel. She was very pretty. She was a very nice girl. One of the popular girls definitely out of the league of me, Willis, and Danger Dan. Okay, well that's not saying much because every girl is out of your league. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. None of them are out of yours, right? Because your neck is so long. Uh, weird flex, but okay. So Isabel was definitely one of the cooler kids. Really pretty, really nice. I kind of knew her. Like, I had, like, spoken to her a few times. Uh-huh. But, like, Willis and Danger Dan had never said anything to her in their lives. Mm -hmm. Well, Danger Dan just didn't talk to people. But Willis was really shy. Right. Like, he was really shy. To set this up, there was, in a couple of weeks, a school dance. There was, like, a homecoming-type dance. Oh. Okay. Okay. And so in this team huddle, Willis, like some sort of action movie hero, says, guys, I have a crush on Isabel. And you know what, guys? I feel empowered because now I have you two as my first friends. I think we should make it our project. We're going to present this in front of the class. Uh -huh. It should be a way for me to ask Isabel to the dance. Dude! Dude, Willis stepped up. Oh my gosh, that's so creative. Willis smart. I was like, dude, you're a genius. Let's do it. Okay, so you and Danger Dan were basically now his, like, wingmen? Yes. Me and Danger Dan had all figured out Willis is about gonna get married. Let's go. <laughs> we're thinking real hard. For the next couple days, we're just thinking we're brainstorming. Uh -huh. We're drawing up the schematics. Now, had Willis talked to Isabel at all? No, never. Never in his life. <laughs> so this is gonna be, like, his first time talking. Dude, he's gonna boss up, dude. Okay. He's just gonna go in. <laughs> now, at this point in my life, I had another hobby, another passion, making videos. Okay. So, in our class, they had like these really old school camcorders. Uh-huh. So they had like these camcorders that we could borrow, uh -huh. right? And so I was like, dude, what if we made like an action movie and present it like showed it in front of the class and at the end you ask her out to the dance. Dude. I was like, dude, everybody else in class playing checkers, the three of us <laughs> playing chess. Okay, we got a big brain, this gonna work. So you're gonna make a movie where Willis is the action star, and at the end of beating everyone up, he's like, hey, by the way, Isabel, do you wanna date me? That is exactly what it was. I, I still remember to this day, this plot was that Willis would play a spy, and he has a secret message he's gotta deliver. And you already know what that secret message is. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> the secret message was, Isabel, will you go to the dance with me? <laughs> so our team was so hyped. We were like, dude, this is the most 900 IQ play of all time. We're going to get the girl. And more importantly, <laughs> we're going to get A's. Okay? <laughs> so for the next few days, we go outside. Dude, this was so epic. They came to school with costumes. I came with the camera, right? I was uh -huh. behind the camera. Directed. We had like fight scenes. 
where like Spy Willis had to fight Danger Dan. And like over and over again. Dude, he looks so tough because Danger Dan was huge. Everyone was terrified He's of it. Breaking pencils in the action scene. <laughs> this story gonna make it sound like I had a crazy childhood, but somehow Danger Dan brought like a real sword. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like he brought like a ninja sword to school, like a real one, and we used it in the movie. I don't That's know how. Dangerous. He's danger Dan. <laughs> so we finished filming. I honestly remember, like I was so hyped about all this, right? Like this story is amazing. It's like a real anime. Uh -huh. We united three people who didn't know each other, didn't like each other. We found out this guy likes this girl. We made this movie, right? I stayed up multiple nights in a row editing this video. <laughs> this was such a fun project. At the end of the day, I was like, dude, this is amazing. And then the movie's done. The big day arrives. The final project? <laughs> the final presentation day arrives. The three of us roll up, you know, <laughs> stride out of the closet. Okay. <laughs> got the flash drive. Got the USB. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to know I hit them. No, put this on the big screen. <laughs> so we got it up on the projector. All the other groups present, you know, was in some kids like, I made a sculpture. <laughs> I made a clay pot. Whatever. You're just no. in the background laughing. <laughs> <laughs> then it's our turn. We put it on and we hit play. And that action movie starts. We got some spy music going on. Uh -huh. Willis comes out and says, I have been given a secret message to deliver. Dude. The fight scene goes down. It's crazy. Now, I'm going to put a little pause in this story right now. So far, right? So far, this whole plan just sounds amazing. It sounds epic. On paper. On paper. Oh, no. This sounds epic. No, what's going to happen? But, but realize this, Adam. No. Like, think for a minute, though. Like, imagine you're sitting in that class. You have to realize how cringe all of this <laughs> actually is. <laughs> because, because, like, the whole time... Like, <laughs> It was because we had spent so much time in that closet, we had lost our mind. <laughs> and like, we're socially awkward kids, so yeah. we didn't like have other friends to be like, hey, this is what we're doing. Hey, by no. the way, this is a bad idea. Yeah, nobody was like, dude, don't do that, okay? <laughs> in the moment, we're like, dude, these scenes are tough, like this is crazy. But when we were actually just sitting there watching it, <laughs> about halfway through, I was like, <laughs> Started sweating a little bit. What did Danger Dan and Willis think while they were watching? This? I don't really know. I was just staring at the screen. I was trying because I knew I could feel like the teacher and all the other students staring at us. They're like, who are these cringe kids? So I was just. I just stared at the screen. I didn't want to look around. About halfway through the video, I realized, dude, this is probably the most cringe thing that's ever happened in my life. And to make matters worse, I know that in like two minutes at the end, he's going to ask Isabel to the dance. So I start to panic. I say, okay, time for Spy Justy to shine. Could I somehow stop the recording from playing? How do I save this? But ultimately, I did. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and it gets to the end. And oh, like there's no. some smoke effects. No. Willis pops up. No. Having defeated Danger Dan and says, I have the secret message to deliver. No. Isabel, will you go to the dance with me? That was probably what the room just sounded like. Just Dude, silence. It, it was silent <laughs> except for one sound. I cannot make this up. <laughs> Isabel started crying. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, Isabel literally started crying and left the class. Oh she just walked out. <laughs> Why did she cry? Because of how cringe it was. <laughs> she literally cringed into tears. <laughs> to give her credit, look, Isabel was a very nice girl, and she did actually end up saying yes, because it would have just been, like, she can't say no to that. <laughs> but that's probably why she cried also, because she realized, like, I can't say no at this point. Like, everybody's seen this happen. <laughs> she went to homecoming with him as, like, a pity favor? Well, she couldn't say no, dude. He literally fought Danger Dan for her <laughs> in a soul. <laughs> that was, hand down, the most <laughs> embarrassing day of my life. <laughs> At the end of the day, we didn't get Willis the girl. We actually all got C's <laughs> on that project. <laughs> that teacher was not amused, okay? <laughs> but 
at least on the bright side, we had made friends with each other. Yeah. Even though it was cringe, Danger Dan and Willis stayed my friends for a long time after that. That's awesome. Hey, we came out of it as friends, you know, we were partners in crime. Or should I say, partners in cringe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this story is pretty intense. You ready? Okay. Okay, now this story starts when I was nine years old. Oh, so man. fourth grade. Okay. Now you already okay. know, at this age, I was a little quiet. I had a few friends, not much going on. Oh, really? But there was a new kid in our class class named Jack. Jack? Now, let me point was, up. Was Jack? <laughs> Jack! He was! Oh! Now, Jack was this new kid at our school. This was like the first year he was at our school. Yeah. And he was literally held back a year, so he was like older than all the other kids. <laughs> yeah. And Jack was super scary. Like, okay. he went through puberty like really young, so he was like really tall, and like his voice was a lot deeper than everyone's. He yeah. was like very, very scary. Right. Now, Jack was actually my enemy. Now, I remember one time at recess, we were playing freeze tag. Like, you know when you like tag someone, you have to freeze? Yeah. I would be like tagged, I'd be frozen, right? Jack would just come up to me and just kick my leg, like as hard as he could. It was like actually really mean. Like, yeah, that's I, not funny. That's actually kind of dangerous and violent. Yeah. But why? Okay, but did he pick on everyone across the board? No, or just, you? just me. And I remember at recess one day, like me and my friends were like playing Foursquare. Oh, and like, yeah. oh yeah. He ran into the center and he took the ball from me and threw it at my face. <laughs> I'm not joking. I bet he did that because he didn't like you because you went up to him on the first day of school and made some cringe joke. <laughs> no. no. Like, hey, Jack, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? <laughs> Jack in the box. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack was like, oh, I'm, I'm getting you back for that one. I don't tell cringe oh, jokes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here we go. So, okay, so he threw the ball at your head. Did it hit you? Yeah, it hit me right in the face. And, like, oh. I went home that day and was, like, crying to my mom about how, like, terrible of a day I had. Yeah. And so my mom was so cool. She literally called the school and asked for Jack's mom's phone number. She called Jack's mom oh. on the phone. Oh. And she was like, I want you to ask your son to stop teasing my little boy. Did it work? <laughs> yeah, not no, really. it made probably worse. <laughs> what? For a little bit it worked, but then he went right back to picking on me. Now, okay, here's where this story gets a little interesting. So, uh -huh. As I mentioned, I had a few friends at this time. It was basically me and a couple other boys. We would, you know, play Pokemon, we would hang out, play video games, whatever. Now, in school, I had the genius idea of calling our friend group the Carrot Club. I was like, guys, what if we called ourselves the <laughs> Carrot Club? Oh, so what you're trying to say is that you were ahead of the curve. Yeah! You were the original cool kid. I was like, oh, like, we need, like, a name for, like, our friend group, like, me and two other guys. And I, I guess I was eating carrots or something. I just picked the Carrot Club. Carrot Club. And, like, everyone had a name. Like, one of my friends, he was small, so he was called Lil Carrot. This is true! His name was not <laughs> Lil Carrot. No, it was. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Carry club more like cringe club. <laughs> what you mean? There was another guy called Baby Carrot. And my name, which I picked for myself, was Big Carrot. You picked your own name. You gave everybody else Lil Carrot Baby no, Carrot. No, everyone picked I'm their Big name. Carrot. <laughs> really? Everyone picked their own name. Okay. It was a lot of fun. So yeah. we would all be like, oh, what's up, Big Carrot? Oh, what's up, Baby Carrot? It was a bunch. It was pretty stupid. But like, I remember going home that day and telling my family about it. I was like, yeah, we have this new club. And my dad was like, oh, that's kind of funny. I actually am going to make something for your club. And what he gave me that night was a stack of dollar bills. Oh. But what? on the dollar bills, what? instead of presents, Presidents, it was carrots <laughs> and he called it carrot currency much like how Justin has what? justy bucks where he put his face on a dollar bill do not <laughs> compare Justy Bucks to your cringe carrot <laughs> cryptocurrency no dude this was sick it had like carrot dollar bill and like had a bundle of carrots but it looked really real now I, I I'm gonna pause this your parents are great people, wonderful people, but I'm gonna just say this, they made your life so much harder. <laughs> Why? Because they're literally, your mom calling Jack's mom, your dad giving you carrot currency. <laughs> they're making your life at school very hard. No, dude, my dad actually is like really good in Photoshop. Like the, the money looked really sick. 
And so the next day at school, I showed up with like this stack of dollar bills and I handed it out to Lil Carrot and like Baby Carrot, all my friend group. And I'm not joking, the club became like cool. Like people wanted to join that weren't even my friends. And it got to a point where people were like, oh, like, can I join the carrot club? Like maybe if I like buy you lunch or like, oh, I'll do like your homework. I'm not joking. You lie. You no, I'm lying. not. I'm not. Literally, I nah. was I was nah. shook nah. because it literally became nah. cool. Do because if they joined the club, I gave them a carrot dollar. So literally the club became so popular, it even like girls wanted to join. <laughs> I'm not making this up. You can ask my parents. <laughs> This literally happened. <laughs> and so the club was just like rampant. It was just going everywhere. People were like, oh, like I'll, I'll, I'll buy like you lunch for like a week. I was like, make it two weeks. They're like, okay, okay, okay. Just to get in the club. I mean, I was basically like the the king of the class oh, at yeah. that time. I know where this story is going. Then I then I moved up. I promoted from big carrot to <laughs> king carrot. Is <laughs> no, that where this going? I should have done that though. Yeah. Okay. Flash forward. Basically, everyone in the class had joined at this point. Every single person. The yeah. class had like 20 kids. I think 19 of them were all in the club. They all had names. It was sick. The only person that had not joined was Jack. <laughs> and Jack came up to me one day. I was sitting there, you know, just surrounded by all the free food that people have given me. And he was like, <laughs> hey, um, do you think that I could join the carrot club? And I was like, no way. That was like, that was, it felt so good to say no to him. Cause all this time he had teased me and he finally wanted to be like my friend. And I was like, no, no way, get out of here. And then I was like, wait. I'm kind of becoming a bad guy. You are! We were all like, the entire club was like hanging out one day. We were all like passing food around, having fun, playing games. And Jack was literally just alone on the other side of the classroom. That's pretty bad. It yeah. was like really sad. I, like I was just sitting there and like everyone around me was laughing or whatever. I just saw him like sitting there just alone and just like looking sad. Oh yeah. And I was just like, this is this just doesn't feel right wow. like it doesn't feel right big carrot got a big heart <laughs> so i was like i i need to make a change here like this is not gonna work so i remember i was like i started walking over to jack and it was just me and him in the corner of the classroom i was like hey jack like uh i actually changed my mind like do you want to join the club oh wow and he was like the reason why i was teasing you and he told me this, he was like, it was because I was being picked on in my old school. And he was like, I just didn't want to be that same kid that got picked on. So he was thinking, maybe if I pick on you, other people wouldn't tease me. And I was like, that's still, that like still sucks for me. But like, I was like, man, that's so sad. Like wow. this kid was in the exact same position I was in. And now I did exactly what he did. I started teasing someone else. So I didn't get teased. I was like, you know what? I'm going to put an end to this. I was like, Jack. I'm sorry, he said sorry to me. I was like, Jack, please come join the Carrot Club. Wow. I gave him a dollar <laughs> and he was like, okay, I'm in. And like, he walked across the classroom, he joined all the other kids. And it was like, actually like such a heartwarming moment. Wow. Like, he joined the club and me and him actually became like really good friends. Let's go. I know, right? Okay guys, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want more of these animated stories. Now wait, Justin. I actually have a big question for you. What's that? Would you like to join the Carrot Club? Oh, absolutely. You can be Justy Carrot. <laughs> Little chromey carrot. <laughs> and you even get your own carrot dollar. Oh, I 100% <laughs> sign me up for the Carrot Club. Okay, I don't actually have any, so I need to go print some. Let me call my dad <laughs> up. This happened when I was in eighth grade. As you guys know, when I was younger, I was very shy. I was very skinny and lanky and no girls really ever <laughs> That's talked not any different now. Okay, so in eighth grade, I had a crush on a girl named Amber, uh -huh, right? She uh -huh. was one of the more popular girls. Yeah. Uh, had a lot more friends than me. Uh, <laughs> it's not harder to have more than zero. But okay, continue. <laughs> and she had a boyfriend at the time named Jacob. Uh -huh. Now Jacob, I want you to picture basically me, except for a little taller, uh -huh. a lot more muscular, uh -huh. better looking, uh -huh. funnier, uh -huh. more handsome. Uh -huh. Basically just me, but better. Okay. Yeah. So I had to find a way to convince her to leave Jacob. Yes. And become my girlfriend instead. 
You were trying to get her to cheat? Well, no, I'm not trying to get her to cheat. I don't know. <laughs> you are a bad influence on our audience. Guys, know. do not, do not, do <laughs> not do this. No, I had to prove to her that I was better than Jacob. Uh-huh. And yeah. what did I have that was better than Jacob? I was a smarter. A bigger neck. No. Oh, oh, oh. Right, right, the brain. <laughs> but also, you had the ability to reach the sweetest fruit on the trees. Did you ever try that? You're going to be like, hey, no. I could... I could grab the sweetest fruits, and Jacob cannot. Me and Amber were in the exact same math class. Uh huh. Okay, and yeah. we were getting ready for this big test. Yes. So the teacher gave us this big practice packet of problems to work oh, on. Oh, that's the worst! I know, it's right? It's the test before the test. Exactly. But he said you could partner up with someone. Uh huh. So I was like, okay, here's my chance. I'll yeah. partner up with Amber. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, right. Like you came over, like, hey, Amber, wanna be part of Yeah, right. Well, it was probably everyone else had a partner and everyone was like, oh, oh, I gotta go work with this Adam kid in the corner. Well, she knew I was smart. As I was saying, uh -huh. I got paired up with Amber. Yeah? I was like, here's my chance. Yeah. We're gonna be partners. We're gonna work through this package. Time to flex these big brain exactly. muscles. Exactly. I was like, Amber, we should work on this outside of class, so let me get your number. Oh, yeah, right. That yeah, Adam? Right. Yeah, right, Adam. Hey, to the animator, could you just do something where Adam's character has a big nose, like Pinocchio? <laughs> like, it gets longer over the course of this video? Why would you lie? I'm not lying. You told me to come here so you can tell me a little story. Yeah. You didn't tell me to come here so you can tell me a bunch of lies. <laughs> Alright, whatever. All right, so we going. exchanged contact information. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I was like, yo Amber, let's work on this. We'll work through the packet. Don't worry, I got you. I know how to do most of this stuff. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna be honest, most of the time we were just talking about, okay, what did you get for question 16? We would text each other back and forth, make sure we got the same answers right. Uh -huh. I tried to flirt a little bit through text. You know, uh, I might have, you, you, you know, you, talked you about like, my Pokemon cards, <laughs> which I still collected in eighth grade. <laughs> hey, hey, Amber, uh, what's one plus one? Guess what? It's less than three! Ah, ah, ah. Justin with those high IQ math pickup I, lines! I get it, because it looks like a heart. Just... <laughs> you really had to explain that! So, we worked through the practice test together, right? It was all great, we, we did well. There was this big test on Friday. Uh -huh. That was what we were practicing for. Uh -huh. So the day comes, it's Friday, I'm already in the class because I get to class kind of early. Uh -huh. She walks in and she's like, hey Adam, like, thanks for working with me. By the way, I didn't really study and I don't think I'm going to do well on this test. Could I copy off you? <gasps> Yo, that's why she picked you as her partner? <laughs> <laughs> You got used for your math skills. <laughs> yeah. Now I was put in a very tricky situation uh -huh. because do I say, no, sorry, Amber, you can't copy and ruin the chance of me getting with her? Uh -huh. Or do I say yes, then she copies off me, she gets a good grade, and then she falls in love with me? You know how people say, oh, that person's a gold digger? Yeah. She was a great digger. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> she used you, you got played. Yeah. So what'd you do? I you let cheated. her cheat. You let her cheat? I let her cheat. Yep. I said, all right, Amber. Are you, you serious? Can... Yeah. You compromised your morals just to get, I don't even know, you thought you'd make this a girlfriend? My plan was she copies off me. Uh-huh. She gets a good test grade. Uh-huh. Then she's like, okay, when I work with Adam, good things happen in my life. I should date him and then more good things will happen in my life. It doesn't really make sense when I say it now, but eighth grade Adam, I didn't really think you know that what? far. Yeah, you're right. I didn't have a girlfriend up until then, so True. I didn't know what to do. This is the only way you knew how to impress a girl was to cheat. <laughs> or Pokemon cards. Or <laughs> One of the uh, two has to work. You're like, okay, well, I whipped out my Pikachu <laughs> on her and it didn't impress her. So now I gotta just break the law. <laughs> so now the teacher passes out the test. We're in the middle of it. She sits right next to me. I can see that she's copying off me. I kind of I kind of do one of these, you know, where I'm kind of leaning. I kind of let her look at my test. We both take the test. I felt great about it. I was like, I know I already, I already aced this. Adam, you, you realize this story is about how you cheated and lied. So why would I believe anything you're telling me? <laughs> because I, I'm not in eighth grade anymore. This, you still play with Pokemon cards? <laughs> not much has changed. So she cheats off me. Uh -huh. um, we both finish the test, we both turn it in, and uh -huh. then we just kind of sit back down and wait for the bell to ring as uh -huh. other people finish. How did you feel? 
Did you I feel good feel about good. yourself? Uh -huh. I didn't feel good, but I realized that okay, now that that worked, uh -huh. I can go talk to her more and be like, hey, I already have your number. Hey, do you want to maybe, you know, hang out with me? At this point, she's still dating Jacob? <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah. I cannot be around you, Adam. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Is it that cringy? Dude, this is literally like, you know how sometimes you see in a movie, it's like the girl is with the, the not so good guy, uh -huh. and then she learns that the other, the nice guy was the right guy along? Yeah. That's like you, except she doesn't end up with you. <laughs> so we finished the test. Yes. All is good. I'm like, this is my chance. The bell rings, all the kids start to leave. And then the teacher says, Adam and Amber, can you stay after? Oh, no, 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 no. And my heart sank. Yep. Especially when I was younger, I did not like getting in trouble. Yeah. I was very teacher's pet. Uh -huh. And when he said, Adam and Amber, can you stick around? I went so pale. Uh-uh. Because I realized, like, oh, no, what is he going to ask? Uh -huh. so all the other kids leave. Me and Amber are still sitting there. Uh -huh. And uh, the teacher's like, so I know that you guys were cheating off of each other because you guys have the same answers. I know that one of you was copying off the other. Who was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. You're gonna say you took the fall. Is that how you're gonna end this story? Do it, Dumbo, lie! Lie! I didn't lie! Lie to me and everyone else! You really, you, and that's not how you're gonna end the story? You're gonna say, I heroically took the fall for Amber. In my in brain! Your, in your shining armor. You have to realize, uh -huh. my priorities, it was like, get a girlfriend was number one. Be a good person was like below that. Uh -huh. I had to do anything. I was desperate. I was like, I didn't want to, Throw her under the bus. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I took the bus. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Adam. Yeah, right. End this story. Timmy says, Why? Why you lie? Why you lie to us? Why you lie? I kind of got in trouble. He yes. basically said, I'm disappointed in you guys. So me and Amber walk out of class together, heads down. We're all embarrassed. And her boyfriend was also in that same class. <laughs> so he was waiting for her outside. He was waiting for her to walk to the next class. And he was basically like, oh, Amber, like what happened? And uh, she was like, oh, we got caught cheating. And then he's like, oh, weird. And then they both just walked away. And I was left alone. <laughs> like that was my chance. I was waiting for her to be like, oh, like Adam, took the fall and now I'm gonna get with him. Sorry, Jacob. But then they just walked off together holding hands and I was just there, <laughs> embarrassed and sad. Even when you make things up, it still ends up it's sad. It's not made up. Why didn't you just make up a happy ending? Why didn't you just say at the end, she she threw Jacob aside and left into my arms. Because that's not what Your nose happened. already about this big. Just keep going. This teaches you that cheating does not ever pay off. It teaches you also that lying on the internet does not make you look cooler. There is a 0% chance. 0% chance. What do you think happened? Lay it out for me. What do you actually think happened? Here's what I think happened. Here's the whole story. Adam is sitting in class staring at Amber like this. Like this. And she's with Jacob. They're just perfectly nice people. I'm sure very smart. Adam's in the back. Like the guy in the anime who's just like, just in the back. <laughs> like that. Just staring. He's coated in sweat. <laughs> and that's the whole story. That's it. There, there, there is no plot. No, you never said anything. Okay, guys, that's it. Make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe if you like this type of series. Also, check out the merch. We got the little cute animated faces on them. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Adam. Adam, now that you told us all this story about the math class, I got a math equation for you to solve. Let's see if you really were top of the class. Okay. One Amber plus one Jacob equals what? A happy couple? Equals one sad Adam. <laughs> Now these are gonna be stories about when we got in a lot of trouble. Oh, now, man. I'm a star. So when I was growing up, when I was like five years old, I loved video games. Uh -huh. However, my parents did not want me playing them. They were like, we would rather you play outside with friends. So they didn't even allow me to have video. <laughs> what? Outside with friends? So you just didn't do anything, did you? <laughs> no, everybody I... knows you ain't got no friends. <laughs> no, that's now. Oh. Back then I had friends. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Basically my parents were like, we don't want you playing video games. We're not going to buy you anything. But I really wanted to play video games. Okay. So my first ever video game console was a Game Boy Color. Now, I'm in fifth grade. Yeah. And my parents, I was like, please, 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 can I have some video games? They were like, okay. Oh. We're going to give you a Nintendo GameCube. That's pretty good. Now, my mind.
mind was literally blown. But they were like, okay, here's a Nintendo GameCube, here's like Super Smash Brothers, here's some Mario games, but uh -huh. you can only play this one hour a week. Uh, <laughs> That's it. One hour. Literally. I thought you were gonna say one hour a day. No. A week. No. They were like, you have to tell us when you want to play, and we'll like let you for an hour, and then that's it. You cannot play. Dude, it. your parents are so sad. <laughs> I would be like, if you came in and said, Justin, I'm gonna give you this tray of cookies. <laughs> you can have one nibble per year. <laughs> that is that is cruel. So I literally plan out like, okay, I want to play Mario for this like 15 minutes, like maybe like Super Smash Bros. for like 30 minutes. Uh -huh. I would plan out like weeks in advance when I'm gonna use that hour. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, my parents were very, very strict, obviously, about me playing video games, but they were also very strict about what type of games I could play. Uh -huh. It had to be rated E. Oh. Like, they didn't want any type of violent games <laughs> going into my brain. Yeah, true. And so, I was having a friend over once, and he was like, oh, uh, do you want to play some video games? I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, oh, let's play Call of Duty. For those of you that don't know, Call of Duty is a definitely a more violent game. Sure. Right? And my parents would not allow me to play yeah, that. Yeah. And so he was like, oh, I want to play Call of Duty. I'm like, oh, I don't own that. Like, my mom won't let me play that game. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was like, oh, uh, okay, I'm just going to go home then. <laughs> like, he literally was like, I only want to play Call of Duty, and if we're not going to play that, I'm just going to leave. Dude, he straight up used you. Yeah. Dang. Dude, I literally felt so sad. I was like, well, I can't play Call of Duty. Like, do you want to play, like, Pokemon or something? And he was like, nah, nope, I'm just going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> After my friend left, I asked my mom, <laughs> I don't know why I even thought this was an a good idea, but I was like, Mom, can I please get Call of Duty? And she was like, no, obviously not. I'm not going to let you play these violent games. Wow. So I was like, wait a minute. I bet there are online games that are similar to Call of Duty. So I went to my computer. I searched like free shooting games. <laughs> I clicked on the first one. I created an account. I started to play it. And the game was like super low quality. Oh, a bunch yeah. of like pop-ups yeah, appeared. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure my computer got a virus. <laughs> 10,000 pop-ups appear. I was like, okay, I'm just going to close out of this. Like, this is a bad idea. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Like, yeah. Okay, I still don't have Call of Duty, and now I think my computer has a virus. Yeah. Right. The next day comes. I go to school. My friend's like, hey, did you get Call of Duty? I was like, no, man. Like, I tried, but I, <laughs> it's not going to work. The school day ends. My mom comes to pick me up from school. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, what's up, mom? Uh-huh. Silence. Hi. Now, normally, on my way home from school, me and my mom tell, oh, how was your day? Whatever. <laughs> Silence. You gotta catch up with your only friend. Uh, yeah. 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 So I can tell something's off. I was like, hey, how's your day? Nothing. Just wow. real tense. So the whole way home, I'm like, what's going on? We make it home. She opens the garage door, pulls oh. in the car. I literally cannot make this up. She was sitting there. Yeah. I was like, should we get out of the car? Just sitting there. And she was like, so Adam. Do you feel guilty about anything? <laughs> and I was just sitting there like, huh? And then she was like, I asked you a question. Is there anything that what? you feel guilty about? I was like, no. Uh, uh, uh. And she was like, I got an email today from a violent video game site saying you tried to create an account there to play their game. Oh, man. And she was like, oh, man. Were you playing violent video games? And my mom was like, I can't believe you lied to me. Wow. If you keep up this bad behavior, you could go to jail if you keep doing this. And you did go to jail, didn't you? No. Are you sure? Luckily, I did not go to jail. However, I felt like I was in jail. Like the next two weeks, I was in so much trouble. That was the most trouble I ever got in as a kid. Now you got in trouble with your mom. <laughs> I got in trouble with the law. Yeah, no way. You already know. Back in middle school, me and my good friend James had a ploy and there was this like scary movie coming out in like a week and we were like oh man we will be the coolest kids at school if we got to go see this scary movie and then we could come back to school and tell all the other kids like, oh, dude, we saw this crazy movie. So it was like rated R. Like they it don't was... let people under the age of a certain amount go in? Oh, of course it's rated R. It oh. was rated like super R. Oh. It was a super scary movie. So you were not going to be allowed to get in? No, there's no way. We were saying, how can we get into this movie and watch it before everybody else? Uh-huh. Because, there, I mean, the age difference was huge. Like there's no way we're allowed to get in. And we look like toddlers. <laughs> Okay, we were sitting at lunch, you know, eating some sandwiches, and we had a scheme. We said, okay, what if we go to the movies together and we buy a ticket 
to like a G-rated movie. And then we do the good old switcheroo. <laughs> and we walk into the R-rated movie and watch it. We decide, okay, it's gonna be lit. We're gonna do that this Friday night. James's mom drives us to the theater. You know, we're in the back seat eating more sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, we get dropped off. James's mom says, all right, guys, time to leave. Time to go go enjoy your Disney movie. Uh -huh. She thought we are gonna go watch a Disney movie. Uh -huh. We even fooled her. Uh -huh. And we say, all right, thank you. Appreciate it. We hop out as we're hopping out. She goes, wait a minute. You guys are gonna go see a Disney movie. James's little sister, who who was literally like eight, a little little kid. She was like, I want to see the Disney movie. Oh no! And the no. mom was like, Okay, I'll just take her with you. No. no. Problem. I was like, Oh, no problem, no problem. Let's just take her with us. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> so we uh, give us three tickets to the new Disney movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get them. We walk straight into the theater, and then this is the moment of truth. I see the Disney movie that we bought the tickets for on uh -huh. one side. Uh -huh. And then I see the super violent R-rated <laughs> horror movie on the other side. I say, Justy, this right here is a defining moment in your life. What you do right now will affect you. Your police record, probably. <laughs> so you know what I did? I walked straight to that no! movie. Oh! As we were sitting there, the lights get dimmer. I'm like, oh man, we pulled it off, boy. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> and then... Some trailers start playing. So now, you know, if you go to a G-rated movie, the trailers they play are similar to the movie you're about to watch. Like, yeah. if you watch a Disney movie, they're gonna play you other, like, Disney trailers. We were in an R-rated horror movie, so the trailers that started to play were very scary and violent. Uh -huh. So I'm sitting there, and a little <laughs> bit nervous, because I'm already terrified of the trailers. <laughs> I look around, out of the corner of my eye, I see that there's one of those movie theater people with like the wand, like yeah. the glowing wand, you know, yeah. like the flashlight, and they're going through and checking everybody's ticket. So I <laughs> <laughs> As the people are about halfway up the theater and they're getting close to us, well, the movie actually starts. At the very start of the movie, this person jumps out like in a mask and attacks somebody, and then it Immediately, James's little sister, who has only now caught wind of what has transpired, uh -huh. starts to cry. Uh -huh. She starts sobbing in the theater. Okay, so everybody's like, what? How did these little toddlers <laughs> get in this movie theater? So we <laughs> grab the stats, grab the soda, I'm out. We book it straight out the theater. Uh huh. The attendants are coming after us with their flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> we run straight into the G-rated movie. The attendants catch up to us. They say, uh, did I see you kids just leave an R-rated movie? I said, no, you did not. I'm just here to watch a G-rated movie. <laughs> and me and James had to sit there and watch the entire movie. <laughs> so nothing bad happened? Something terrible almost happened, Adam. What? I almost dropped my popcorn. <laughs> okay, so when you were growing up, like elementary school, yes. did you get to order school lunch? I did once in a while, and those those were great days. Right? Oh, man. Right, okay, oh, man. so this story gets intense. Okay. Actually intense. You might start sweating. I'm an intense person, <laughs> but the sweating is all you. Okay, and those clammy hands. Okay, so this story starts when I was in fifth grade. I was 10 years old. Okay, okay. Now, how it was set up was every day you could order school lunch. It was like two or three dollars, yes. right? My mom at the start of the year put in enough money so I could have five school lunches a year. What? Every other day. I five had to bring, a year? I had to bring my own lunch. And if I own lunch. <laughs> It would be like some like peanut butter and jelly and like some apples. Wait, got, like, five, I thought you were gonna say five a week or no, five a month. No, five a year. Five school lunches per year. What, what was your mom's reasoning for that? She thought that food from our house was healthier. Oh, yeah. okay. Which okay, is fair. Okay, it okay. probably is. Yeah, yeah, probably. Now at my school, I don't know about you guys where you, where you are, if you're in the United States or not, but at my school we had like classic stuff like pizza, pizza. chicken nuggets, oh, burgers, corn dogs, corn dogs, oh, we had burgers. Oh, stuff like all that. my favorite food exactly in one place. exactly but when I brought lunch from home it was always the same thing it was a sandwich and some apples and maybe some crackers you're forgetting the grass you're forgetting the sweet sweet fruits from the top of the tree but that's okay <laughs> sandwich is pretty good now <laughs> normally because I would bring it in a lunchbox right it would get all crushed yeah and so I would be sitting at the table all right here we go uh -huh. take out my PB and J it's uh -huh. all crushed uh -huh. I look over my friend he's got a nice plate with a big burger uh -huh. and a corn dog. Uh -huh. 
Um, I'm so jealous. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, your friend wouldn't share? Did you ask, hey, could I have a little bit? No. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. That's not a real friend. Would you have shared with me? Absolutely not. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, you already know if, we, if I was in that cafeteria with you, I have about six burgers and about 400 chicken nuggets. Can I have some? Absolutely not. No. So another thing I forgot to mention was that on Fridays at my school, uh -huh. they had this special thing where they would give us popcorn. So they <laughs> okay. would have like one of the parents' moms volunteer to make popcorn and my mom was one of those moms. Oh man. So oh. once a month on Friday, she would come and make popcorn and every kid could buy a bag for 25 oh, cents. Oh, it's not free? I thought it was free. 25 cents. What? a ripoff! <laughs> Your school is running a business! <laughs> so my mom would sometimes come in, right? Uh -huh. And it was always like a great time. Once like a she, month. Yeah, once yeah, a month. Okay, okay. It was always fun. She would always come over to me. I, like She sometimes like speak me like a free popcorn. Your mother is embezzling popcorn from the school! <laughs> no, no, no! I'm reporting that! One day I was like, I want to use one of my five school lunches. Oh, Today's man. the day. Why? But like, why? I was, was feeling it? myself. I was like, I gotta flex. <laughs> you know, I want to be like the cool kid. Cause I would see everyone line up and they'd look so cool. And yeah. I'd just be sitting there at the table alone uh -huh. eating my sandwich. Cause oh, most kids man. order lunch. Yeah, yeah. In my head I was like, okay, I, what I want is a burger and some white milk, just normal milk. Uh -huh. That is my dream meal. A burger and milk. That's what I want to eat. <laughs> so I get in line, I punch in my number, whatever. So I grab my tray, I point to the thing, she puts it on. Oh man. I keep going and I go to grab the milk and I'm like, wait, this is a fish wish. This what? is a fish sandwich. What's a fish wish? It's like a burger except for instead of You didn't burger, really said fish wish? What's a fish wish? It's a fish burger. Put it back! Get a regular burger! I was already too far down the line, and I was too scared oh, to go like back. I thought I would get in trouble, and they would like not give me anything. Oh, really? Yeah. You already know me. I be, hey, I don't mess with no fish wishes! I've been here! Give me a real burger! You were too scared? Yeah. I was oh, like, oh no. man, I got a fish sandwich. So I grabbed my milk, whatever, put it on, went to my table. Oh. I put it down. I was so sad. You wasted your one out of five on a fish switch. Yeah, and I go to sit down at the table. I open my milk and I start to drink it and it's pink. What? I'm like, what is this? And it says on the carton, strawberry. I was like, no! Because, you, you, because the white milk and the strawberry milk both come in white cartons. You had one job. Get a burger and the regular milk. Exactly. And you got a fish switch <laughs> and some strawberry milk. You, you trolling. My day was ruined. Yeah. I was literally about to cry. You guys don't know how important <laughs> yeah, this right. was to I me. was literally, you were definitely crying. You eat the fish switch. I had a lot of fish switch. <laughs> so I, I basically was just depressed the entire day. Probably the entire the week. The entire month. Honestly, yeah. my my whole year would be ruined. <laughs> I had to eat a fish wish. Have you never had a fish wish? That's not what it's called. It's called a fish sandwich. <laughs> Why you call it a fish wish? <laughs> like, I thought I thought Because I, I wish to never yeah. eat this fish. <laughs> When I said that the first time, I thought it was literally a fish that grants you a wish. <laughs> so I used one of my precious school lunches and I just belly flopped. Just everything went wrong. A tragedy. Sad. A tragedy. Now, during this time, uh -huh. my mom, for some reason, wanted to make our entire family vegetarian for like uh -huh. the whole year. <laughs> I think it was because she wanted to go on a diet that was vegetarian, and since she cooked for everyone, she was like, all right, well, all of us are vegetarian. Wow, your mom's a savage. Yeah. Your mom's like, y'all doing what I'm telling you, and I don't want to hear no butt. And she was basically like, if I catch you eating meat, you'll be in trouble. Because she wanted to make sure everyone was vegetarian. Right? And you know, this guy likes to eat burgers. <laughs> So, you already know me, I don't like getting in trouble. I was just like you when you were younger. I was straight A's, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not eating any meat. So flash forward a couple months, right? It's probably like December, Christmas time. I'm like, I'm gonna use another one of my school lunches. Oh man. Now, it was probably like a Friday. I was, I was feeling good. I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get the lunch that I want. So I was like, well, what's the lunch I want? What is the lunch you want? The burger uh -huh. and the milk. Okay, but I wanted you want to get the first time. Uh -huh. But I was like, wait a minute. Uh -huh. A burger is meat. I, I'm not supposed to eat this. Oh man. So then oh. you get that kind of like, ooh, I'm doing something wrong. This oh. kind of feels oh, you good. Get, oh, you get a rush. Right, you exactly. <laughs> so I go to the line. Adam gets a rush when he's eating those burgers. <laughs>
So I go into the line. I'm confident this time. I'm like, I know exactly what I want. Yeah. Punch in the number. <laughs> say to lunch lady, I'd like one burger. Oh, She's like, okay, there's your burger. I made sure it was a burger this time. Uh huh. Yeah, you even I'm checked like, it. Yep. I'm like, yep. I'm like, there's no fish in this <laughs> wish. No, no, no. I, I go grab the milk, make sure it's the right milk, uh -huh, put it on uh -huh, the tray. Uh -huh, I sit uh -huh. down. Uh -huh. Boom. Uh -huh. I got my meal that I wanted. I did it my way. So I pick up my burger. I'm about to go in for a big bite. And who do I see walk into the lunchroom? Me? My mom! Oh, what? It was popcorn day! Oh. And she was in charge of the popcorn! You idiot! <laughs> <laughs> this happens once a month! How did you do that? I don't know! I was so caught up in the burger, I just couldn't think! My brain got all foggy. So I see her walking in, wheeling this popcorn machine in. She got the popcorn in one hand, uh -huh, wheeling the machine. Uh -huh, uh -huh, She's uh -huh. all smiling. Uh -huh, I'm in the lunchroom. Uh -huh. I got my tray. Oh, man. And I was one of the first ones to sit down because I ran into the lunchroom that Naturally, day. Naturally. Yeah. I was the first one. All my other friends were still in line. Oh, so man. here I was alone, and she knows where I sit. She knows what class I'm in. She knows where to find me. So she's like, I look for the kid sitting by himself with no friend. <laughs> I know where my son is. So I'm like, OK. I have this burger. Uh -huh. I have to hide it because I'm uh -huh. gonna get in trouble. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, do I take the patty out and like put it in my pocket? What? Do I try and eat the burger really quick so she can't see that I'm I ordered a burger? Because like she said, you cannot eat meat. And she said I get in trouble if I ate meat. So you really consider taking the patty out and hiding it? Yeah. I was considering like switching my tray with someone else, but I didn't have any friends. True. I didn't have anyone to switch it with. Oh man. So I started oh, sweating. I started oh, sweating. I was oh. panicking. Here she comes. She's walking over with the popcorn machine. She sees me. She's waving and she starts walking over, kisses me on my head. And she's like, uh, I thought I told you not to eat meat. I was like, oh yeah, sorry. She's like, okay, just uh, in the future, just get like uh, a salad or something. I was like, okay. And then she just walked away. That was it. I that didn't even get in whole, trouble. That was a lot of build up to not that I didn't even get in trouble. I thought she was about to say, ooh, ooh, put some Roblox sound in there. Ooh, 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 are you kidding me? That's all she said? That's literally it. Wow. Maybe she didn't give me free popcorn that day. Wow. Uh, but like, that was it. And the moral is, I guess if you don't want to live in constant fear, just do the right thing. Okay, guys, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this series and subscribe if you want more. Man. You know, Adam, there is a real lesson to your story. Life is a lot like a school cafeteria. Sometimes you gotta do the right thing. Sometimes you gotta do the wrong thing. Sometimes you stuck there by yourself eating a fish with. <laughs> this story starts when I was in fifth grade. So when I was growing up, when I was from like a baby to like elementary school, my family had like a dog and a cat, just like normal pets, okay. right? Okay. Now, I went to my friend's house one day uh -huh. and he had a hamster. And he was like, do you want to like play with my hamster? I was like, what is a hamster? <laughs> I had never seen a hamster in real life. <laughs> He brought me over to its cage. He's like, you want to hold it? I was like, you can hold it? So I hold this hamster. It's like this blonde little cute hamster. It was so adorable. I immediately fell in love. Right when I got home, I was like, oh, mom, 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 please, please, please. Can I have a hamster? Why you want to ha you already have a cat and a dog? When you were growing up, did you have cats and dogs? I did not have any pets. Okay, well. But if I did, <laughs> it wouldn't be a hamster. <laughs> what would it be? Maybe a pet donut? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was like, mom, can we please get a hamster? Uh -huh. And she was like, no, hamsters smell bad. I don't want to take care of it. Our cat might eat it. There's true. no way true. I'm going to get you a hamster. Okay, that's true. So I was like, oh, I just got so sad. I actually showed my older sister some photos of this hamster. Uh -huh. And so me and her were like, let's try and like convince oh. our mom to get us a hamster. Dude, that's high IQ because you convinced your sister to want it. And then you guys teamed up exactly. to convince your parents. Exactly. And she was older and a lot smaller smarter than me. True. So she actually had the idea. She just got this like old laptop and she was like, I have the program PowerPoint on my laptop. Oh. We can make a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> like they do in school on like the benefits of owning a hamster and like how awesome they were. What are the benefits of owning a hamster? <laughs> Happiness? No! <laughs> so me and my sister, we get to work on our laptop. I'm like finding photos. She's typing up all this facts about hamsters and like how happy we'd be. It took us like a week. Me and my sister like sit my mom down and we're like, we got we got something to show you. Uh -huh, this is gonna uh -huh. change your mind. Uh -huh. We load up the PowerPoint. Uh -huh. You know, we're going over our points. Hamsters are soft, they're cuddly. We try and show our videos of the hamsters to try and like yeah. trick her brain into loving them. And so we finished this like 30 minute presentation. 
And she's just sitting there. She's like, I'm still not getting you a hamster. <laughs> I was like, what? I basically almost, well, I did start crying because I really wanted it. <laughs> but she was like, you know what, Adam? I know you want this hamster really bad. I'm still not gonna get you a hamster, but I was reading a magazine and I saw an ad for an ant farm. And if you guys don't know what an ant farm is, it's basically like this plastic container. It's like a thin <laughs> plastic container where you put like sand in and then you put ants. They like make tunnels in the sand and it's kind of like this like ecosystem of ants. Yeah. And so she was like, how about instead of a hamster, I get you an ant farm? <laughs> And I was like, okay, dude, what? your mom is actually a genius. <laughs> you guys got completely bamboozled. <laughs> that would be like if I was like, hey, Adam, I want some cake and some nuggets. And you said, let me meet you in the middle and get you some celery. <laughs> and you guys were like, okay, cool. So I was in fifth grade. I didn't have a lot of friends. And these ants were so cool. I would watch them for hours, just like making little tunnels on the sand. It was really cool. Flash forward a little bit. I go to school one day and I had a friend at the time named Lauren. Now this was in fifth grade and- Lauren, is that a girl? Yeah. She was my actual you, friend. You're telling me you made a PowerPoint about hamsters. You had a pet ant farm in your room. And you also had a friend who was a girl. Yeah. <laughs> Are we playing two truths and a lie? <laughs> I actually had a close friend named Lauren. She was actually really cool. Now to set this up, in my class in fifth grade, <laughs> On Fridays, the teacher had this 30 minute period of time called free time. Oh, free where time. Where it was like, you could do whatever you want. Uh -huh. You could play computer games, you could hang out with friends. Everyone in the class like looked forward to like, oh, Friday at noon, that's free time for wow. 30 minutes. It's gonna be the best. Normally in our free time, me and Lauren would play Neopets or Club Penguin together. But I was telling her, I was like, hey, by the way, Lauren, I actually have this new pet at home. And she was like, wait, really? I was like, yeah, I could actually bring it to school. No, you didn't, you were idiot. <laughs> it was Thursday night. I packed the ant farm in my backpack. Get to school. <laughs> They're still in my backpack. The teacher's like, okay, uh, I think it's around noon. Uh, you guys have free time for 30 minutes. I'm like, all right, here we go. Gonna bring out the ants. And I was yeah. sitting next to Lauren and I was like, hey, Lauren, do you want to see them? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I open up my backpack. I reach down my hand and I feel sand on the bottom of my backpack. <laughs> oh, no. The ant farm had tipped upside down and all the sand and ants had fallen out in my backpack. I was like panicking. I was like, okay, what do I do? And I realized that there's ants all over the floor of where my backpack is because it had been like three hours since I brought them to school and I didn't notice them. So there's just ants everywhere on the floor. You're like, no, my only friend. So I start panicking. I couldn't hide it because Lauren was like, she already knew about the ant farm. So I'm like, Lauren, like I dropped all these ants on the floor. Like I need help. She was like, I don't know what to do. In my head, I thought that if the ants spread far enough, the entire school would become infested with ants and they would like reproduce and everyone would know it was me and I would get expelled. I was like, I need to get these ants off this floor before anyone finds out. So I had a genius idea. Uh -huh. In my lunchbox that day, cause my mom packed my lunch, I actually had a banana. So I was like, wait a minute, ants love nah, sweet foods. Nah, 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 they nah, love nah, sugary nah, foods. Nah, 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 if I nah. cut a part of a banana off and put it on the ground and wait a little bit, all the ants will gather to the banana, and then I can just scoop them up and put them oh, back in the backpack. Dude, that's actually high IQ. Right? Dude. That's actually smart. Dude, yeah. I was panicking. Yeah. That was like the best idea I had. Yeah. So I was like real sneaky. There was like 10 minutes left of free time. I'm like cutting this banana. I put it on the ground next to me, just hoping that they all start crawling back to the banana. How far had they spread from the It was backpack? probably like a 10 foot radius around me. <laughs> they were like everywhere. And I was like just waiting there, just sitting and sweating. You're just sitting there and be like, oh. <laughs> I wish I got that hamster. Oh. The teacher's like, all right guys, uh, free time is over. We're gonna move on to mathematics. How the classroom worked was there was like the front board, but the math section was over by my side of the classroom. So he was like, all right, everyone, let's gather around on this oh, side of the classroom. Oh no. And we'll go over math. No. So all the kids come <laughs> over and sit on the floor. <laughs> and so I'm just sitting there. Praying that Dude. A, no one steps on my pet, 
I don't want them to die or B that anyone finds out about them. So the teacher walks over to my side of the classroom. All the kids gather around. He starts being like, all right, let's do some math. Uh, seven times five, okay. And then one of the kids, it was like some girl in the class. And she was like, oh my gosh, I think there's ants all over the floor. And I was like, my cover is blown. Dude, my anxiety level right now is so high. <laughs> and all the kids looked around because they were all in the section that the ants were. And they were like, oh my gosh, there's ants everywhere. Because there was literally hundreds on the floor. <laughs> and my plan had not worked. <laughs> had him in the corner trying to bury himself <laughs> in the sand <laughs> to hide. He's like, I'm not here, guys. I thought that if they found it was me, I would actually get expelled. Up until this point, the only person that knew I had an ant farm was Lauren. I hadn't told anyone else. <laughs> Lauren about to sell you out. So the teacher was like, <laughs> everyone, uh, let's stand up. Does anyone know where all these ants came from? <gasps> oh, no. And so I'm sitting there praying that no one looks at me. No one notices Please that I'm beat red and don't sweating. Don't tell me that Lauren sold you out. No. Now, he's like, I'm gonna ask again. Does anyone know where all these ants came from? <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm sitting there. I kind of like look over at Lauren. I was hoping that she was a real one. That she wouldn't snitch on me. The teacher asked one final time. He was like, does anyone know where these ants came from? And I'd never seen them this serious. And Lauren actually started to raise her hand. <laughs> and she was like, I think I know where they came from. And Lauren kind of looked over at me a little bit. She's like, yeah, I think that someone accidentally left a banana on the floor and all the ants might have came in from the outside. And the teacher's like, really? And then he looked down and there was a bunch of ants surrounding the banana. And so I got off the hook because he's like, oh, it's just an accident. Someone just left a banana in here and somehow all these ants got in. She actually covered for me. <laughs> Your teacher was an idiot. <laughs> he didn't notice the sand. <laughs> He did notice Adam McSweaty inside covered in sand. No! Lauren was the actual homie. I don't know how she came up with that so fast, but like she, she came up with a story that actually made sense, but didn't like get me in trouble. And so basically what the teacher did was he picked up this banana, which had basically all the ants on it. And Dude, he your plan actually worked. It actually worked. He took the banana and just tossed it in the garbage. He threw your friends in the garbage. Yeah, 30 minutes go by. <laughs> Math finishes, all the kids return back to their seats. And I like sneakily go over to the trash no, can no, and you take didn't. the bag out. No, you And like didn't. rescue my friends. I like take the bag and shove it in my backpack and then like sneakily put all the ants back in their cage. Ew. Okay, let me let me rewind. A little YouTube rewind action. <laughs> First off, you wanted a hamster. Yeah. Then you made a PowerPoint. Yeah. Then your mom bamboozled you into getting an ant farm. Yeah. Then you befriend a woman named Lauren. Yeah. Who covers for you. Yeah. Your teacher somehow believes that all these ants were attracted to one banana on the ground. Yeah. I only got one thing to say, Adam. <laughs> what? This would not have happened if you had a pet donut. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've had some pretty bad haircuts in my life. Have you? I mean, I've had some crazy ones. So I'm going to tell a story, and do you also have a story? I got a story, but before we get into that, Adam, everybody check out the merch. Guys, no. how many of you guys have sent us photos of you guys who have bought Boxy or bought the merch, and it's so awesome. So definitely keep sending us that. Check out the merch. It'll be linked down below, or you can click the card right here, and let's get into the story. Now, this story starts when I was in sixth grade. Oh, man. Now, you need to understand. <laughs> At this point in my life, sixth grade is the year when you go from a fifth grader elementary school yeah. baby stuff yeah. to sixth grade middle school. Yeah, you the older there. kid, yeah. there's girls, you're starting to mature a bit. Now, when I was in fifth grade, I was pretty boring. I kind of oh, looked yeah. like a nerd. So I was like, you know what? Sixth grade, first day of school, I want to roll in there looking like an actual bad oh, boy. like a baller. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to some rock music. Oh. You know, I might have listened to music. some Red Velvet bad boy. Uh, I wanted to be a bad boy. I, okay. So I started wearing like some black clothes that had like broken hearts on it. Like I wanted to be like an edgy teen. <laughs> you wore a t-shirt with a broken heart on it? Yeah. I was like an e-boy even back then. Whose hearts were you breaking? <laughs> uh, only one. Your <laughs> mom's. Uh, yeah. yeah. I had this idea in my mind where 
fifth grade, I was a nerd. I didn't have any girlfriends, obviously. Sixth grade, True. I'm a new me. I'm gonna reinvent myself. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna walk in on the first day of school and just be that cool dude that sits uh, in the yeah. back. Just all edgy, all the girls looking just, at him like, just wow. Just big on TikTok with yeah. the E-boy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it was the summer going into sixth grade. I was like, I'm going to grow my hair out. Oh. And then right before <laughs> school starts, I'm going to get my hair cut in like a really cool like bad boy way. Where What's it's like up, jagged boy? and like kind of long. What Jagged? Like some bangs in the front like covering one of my eyes. Like oh. that type of stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna look cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, so back in elementary school, my mom cut all my hair because we just wanted to save money and it's like, why does it matter? That's I just cut smart, your hair, yeah, right? smart, yeah. So she would always sit me down in the kitchen, put me in a chair, cut my hair the same way. It was always like really dirty. True. So this time I was like, mom, you need to understand, this is not the normal routine. I want to cut my hair to look like a bad boy. <laughs> so she's like, oh, I got you. <laughs> you pulled out, you pulled out this, the phone. You pulled out TikTok. <laughs> out some e boys. <laughs> I want to look like them. She said, I'm, that's not possible. You better uninstall that app. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I had this idea in my mind because on the first day of school is also picture day. Uh -huh. So I was like, dude, I got to look fresh for these pictures. Yeah. So I'm like, mom, School starts in a couple days. I need you to give me a haircut. I want to have this cool, like, bangs with the jagged edges. And, Dude, like, like I, I, okay, I'll put a pause. Your relationship with your mom is so interesting. Like, you just boss her around. Yeah. What is this? You're like, no. Mom, it's your first day at school and you look super cool. No. You're gonna cut this way she or was else. Like, she was like pumped. She was like, dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you look so cool. Like, I promise. Yeah. We were like pumping each other up. Oh, yeah. Now, we don't have a mirror in my kitchen where she cuts my hair, <laughs> so I can't see what's going on. My mom starts to cut my hair. I'm like, okay, remember, mom, like, remember what I told you? She's like, Adam, don't worry. I got this. Now, she starts to cut, whatever, like she uses the razor, cuts it on nice and short, kind of goes around uh, like, uh, it doesn't uh, really feel like... I don't feel what? like an e-boy yet! But maybe, maybe this is like part of the process. <laughs> my mom been cut my hair for two minutes! My TikTok DMs are still empty! Why? And I remember she literally took the razor, like the electric razor, and just went completely in a circle <laughs> around my head. What? I was like... I why yes, this is gonna lead to the bad boy look. I don't know like and so she went in a complete circle and she was like, okay I'm done. I was like, what? <laughs> and I, I, I could only feel it. I was like, it feels kind of weird. Wait, 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 wait. She went around like this? Yeah, like a perfect circle. That doesn't make any sense. It's like a bowl cut. <laughs> I'm like, alright, I guess this is the new me. Like, I gotta go see what this looks like. Yeah. And I remember so clearly I walked to the bathroom the light was turned off. I kind of was like, okay, mentally ready. Like, oh, this is the new me. Walk into the bathroom, turn on the light, yeah. look in the mirror. Yeah. I literally started crying. <laughs> literally. I scream. Why? Because I look so ugly. Dude, that wasn't the haircut. <laughs> Dude, no. I literally look like the biggest square of all time. Just Why? such a nerd. Why are you gonna put your mom on blast? See, dude, you literally so salty about this haircut. You've been waiting 10 years <laughs> to tell this story. Dude, I literally had the outfit on point. It was all black. It had hearts and tears and angels on it. I was like, dude, I need to look like a bad boy. And it was just not right. <laughs> I just look like, like just a nerd. <laughs> Okay, and that's okay. basically it. That was the worst <laughs> haircut of my life. Okay, that actually kind of ties into my haircut story. Now, funny enough, Adam, now this is not scripted. I actually went through a very similar phase. I feel like a lot of people go through this kind of phase where they try to be like a bad boy, you know uh -huh. what I mean? I was listening to a lot of heavy music. I was dressing in like a bunch of dark colors, you know, real moody. Yeah, so you know, I was like 13-ish. I was listening to edgy music. I was watching lots of anime. I said, <laughs> I want to look like one of these guys, okay? In the anime? Yeah, in the anime, you already know. So, I decided. I was like, I have to get attention from like people to make friends and also girls somehow. Mm -hmm. I said, I gotta be different. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, hold up. What did your hair look like up until this point? I basically always had it like very short, like almost like a buzz cut. Just like really boring. Really simple. Gotcha. Really plain and simple. Uh huh. I said, I gotta glow up. <laughs> I decided I'm gonna grow my hair as long as possible. Now you, I, I actually don't think that you ever knew me at this point, I used to have hair down to my shoulders. 
What is that? <laughs> what is that thing? I'm just trying to imagine what that would look like. Dude, it was actually Wait, really wait, wait. Would you do the thing where you go like this? Yeah, okay, that's part of the story. Really? That's actually part of the story. Dude. So, dude, every part, like, you have to understand for guys, there's a certain threshold. <laughs> when you grow your hair out, it gets to a certain point where it gets in your eyes, and then you have to go like this. You gotta flip it like Justin Bieber used dude, to do. all the time, okay? I literally... Part of this story was I started to develop neck pain <laughs> because I was going like this, like 400. It still hurts now. People just think you're dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, growing your hair is such a process. It probably took me like, like a year, almost two years, and it got down to my shoulder. Okay? Now at that, you gotta do. You have to switch. You have to do a lot of. You know, you a lot of. Products, uh -huh. you know, it was a very hard thing to take care of. As the hair grows out, you know, it enters like the danger zone. Wait, and was it worth it though? Like, were you getting more attention from girls the longer and longer your hair Dude, got? I actually kind of was, but it not. It wasn't necessarily like good attention. It was just like, wow, he's very different. <laughs> kind of looks a little bit weird. <laughs> he always looks like he just got out of bed, uh -huh. basically. The long hair was cool, but there were some major problems. The maintenance is really tough, okay? Uh, you had to do this thing a lot, okay? And also, like, when it was summer, it would get super hot. And then I would end up super sweaty. You uh -huh. know what that's like, okay? That's not fun. And then, I was actually... Like in high school, I was a swimmer, right? I was on the swim team, so we'd have morning practices. Uh -huh. And then you, I, I, this one day changed my whole life. I basically, I got out of the pool and my hair was still wet, right? It was still wet. I was walking to class. Okay, this was during the winter and my hair had literally frozen. Dude. Dude, it froze because it was so long. Wait, so you just had like icicles for hair? I, dude, it literally froze because it was so long. Like when your hair is shorter, it's like, I don't know, it's like closer to your head so it's warmer so it doesn't freeze. When it's really long, it froze and then a piece of it chipped off. Wait, what? That's not a joke. It actually just broke off. Does that happen to like girls with long hair? I don't know, but it happened to me. That was the turning point where I said no more. Dude, that's dangerous. It was bad. Okay, I basically threw an icicle when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but I decided at that point, I said, no more, it's over. And I went home and I bought a razor. I bought an electric shaver that same day and I buzzed my entire head. Two years of growing hair out down the drain. So, you know, on the bright side, the maintenance was better. My neck pain got a little bit better. Uh -huh. My hair was not snapping off anymore. But there is one big negative to when Justy has very short hair. What? I basically look like I'm a toddler. <laughs> <laughs>